Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark Cards bring you another in their exciting new series of broadcasts on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Each week, Hallmark will bring you true-to-life stories of actual persons who, in their own way, have contributed to a better world for all of us to live in. Presented on the Hallmark Hall of Fame by our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. I'm sure that most of us know the heroes of bronze and marble and monument and song, but too many heroes, men and women alike, have earned fame without receiving it. To those people whose service, sacrifice, and devotion achieved great things, now too little known to us, Hallmark respectfully dedicates this Hall of Fame. And tonight, Hallmark pays tribute to Ida Lewis. I suppose most of us can recall a lot of exciting stories of men against the sea, but how many of you know any such stories concerning women? Well, tonight, we're going to bring you the true and dramatic story of a brave woman against the sea, the story of Ida Lewis. And now, here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you're looking for a way to say something to someone you care for, look for a Hallmark card, and you'll find the card you want to send. Because Hallmark Cards are designed to say what you want to say, just the way you want to say it, with the good taste you demand of anything that bears your signature. That's why Hallmark, on the back of a greeting card, has come to mean you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Battle Circus, starring Humphrey Bogart and June Allison, with Keenan Wynn and Robert Keith. And now, here is Lionel Barrymore with your Hallmark Hall of Fame. The sea, man's great highway of commerce, the trackless arena of his war, the inspiration of poets and painters, so majestic in its calm and so terrible in its wrath. Now, this is a story of the sea, a true story of a woman who dared its wrath. It's a winter's night in the year 1857. The nor'easter screams through the blackness with the voices of a thousand demons. It lashes the sea into moving mountains of destruction and hurls it with the deafening thunder against the reef, pounding and tearing and grinding away at that which only hours ago was a proud clipper ship out of Boston Harbor. On shore, ashore but a few hundred yards away, a handful of men struggle to launch a long boat into the boiling surf. One of the men is the president of the Massachusetts Humane Society. Don't give up, men! One more try! It's no use, sir! No use, but we can't stand by and let that crew perish with their ship! Well, we well, sir, we haven't got enough men to get the boat through the surf! No, not enough men with courage! Do 
dawn comes cold and gray. The sea pounds sullenly at the Massachusetts coast, and farther south runs in long, heavy swells across Rhode Island's Narragansett Bay. The bay which Ida Lewis knows so well. The bay which she watches from the windows of the lighthouse on Lime Rock Island. An insignificant shelf of rock in Newport Harbor, barely large enough for the great stone tower and the caretaker's cottage. This is the world of young Ida Lewis and of her father, Captain Jose Lewis, keeper of the light. Ida. Ida. Oh, Father, I was hoping you were asleep. Sleep? How can a man sleep knowing that he's failed? First hurricane of the winter, and I can't even get out of bed to tend my own light. Now, please, Father, you've got to be quiet. You know what the doctor oh, said. Oh, blast the doctor. Oh. Did you trim the burner? Yes, Father. And the mirrors? I'll polish them after I fix your breakfast. I don't want any breakfast. I want to get out of this bed. Oh, well. I'm sorry, my dear. I just hate to be a quitter, that's all. And yet that's that's what it's come to. There's nothing left except to quit. Oh, now you know you don't mean that. Why, why, this is our island. This is our light. Girl, there's no point in fooling ourselves. I'm through. Well, then, then I'll tend the lighthouse for you. Ida. Oh, yes, yes, why not? Didn't I do it last night? I can do it every night. I know everything there is to do, how to keep the light, how to signal to shore, mm -hmm. make out yeah. reports, row a boat, swim, everything. Well, there's, there's one thing you forget. The lighthouse service is for men. I don't care. I dare you. You're going on 17. It's time that you live the shore. And time soon to think of marriage. This is where I want to be, Father. To be part of the sea, smell the salt air, to hear the cry of gulls, to watch ships bound for California and the China coast, to know that in darkness and storm and fog, that our light's guiding them to safety. My child. This is our place, Father. Well, even if we could stay, my dear, the day is coming and... Uh... Maybe not far off when I won't be here. You'll be all alone. Even then, Father, this is my place. <laughs> fair spring day, the Lime Rock Lighthouse is untended for the space of a few daylight hours. Ida's ashore at her father's funeral. Then she returns aboard the tiny supply boat which calls weekly at Lime Rock Island. Master of the boat, young William Wilson, accompanies Ida to the door of the caretaker's cottage. You've got your trunks packed, Miss Lewis. I'll carry them down the landing. Thank you, Mr. Wilson, but I haven't packed anything. If you have time, no, I would like your help in another way. Anything I can do. Then uh, come in, please. I want to write a letter to the Lighthouse Board in Washington, and then if you'd be good enough to mail it for me. Of course, but maybe I don't understand. Yes? Well, from the way you talk, it sounds like you aren't leaving the island. No, I, I don't intend to. What? I'm asking the authorities in Washington to appoint me the official lighthouse keeper of Lime Rock Island. You... <laughs> you... You find it amusing? Yes, a girl lighthouse keeper. I suppose you think a woman can't do it. It's a man's job. It certainly is, and Washington will tell you so. I wouldn't be too sure of that, Mr. Wilson. Until a substitute is sent out here, somebody has to tend the light, and I'm going to do it. That's my answer to you, Mr. Wilson, and to Washington. <laughs> The weeks pass slowly for Ida Lewis. Once every seven days, she goes down to the landing to wait for the coming of the supply boat and a letter. Ahoy, Ida! Stand by for the line! I'm ready. Throw it! Take that 
on that hand stanchion. I've done this before, Mr. Wilson. She's back. Did you see the trouble I had jacking in here, huh? Yes, the wind's from the wrong quarter. Any mail, Mr. Wilson? Uh-huh, there you are. The letter. Yes, this is the last time I'll be bringing supplies out to you, Ida. You know exactly what's in the letter, I suppose? I got a pretty good idea. Well, why don't you open it? Or are you afraid to? No, not at all, Mr. Wilson. Well? For your information, Mr. Wilson, this is official notification that by special act of Congress, Ida Lewis is hereby appointed keeper of the Lime Rock Lighthouse. Of all the simple-minded fools. Mr. Wilson. Well, there's no other name for him. I hand over the safety of our harbor and our ships to a woman. Trusting the lives of our seamen in the hands of a 17-year-old girl. Mr. Wilson, I value the lives of our seamen just as highly as any man does. Oh, I, I'm not quarreling with you. It's just... Mr. Wilson. That sounded like an explosion. The cannon at Fort Adams. Something's wrong. It's a signal. But wait. Wait, out there in the lee channel. Yes, it's a rowboat. It's capsized. Quick, Ida, help me cast off. No, no, a sailboat would never get there in time. You know there's no wind in the lee channel. I'll use the rowboat. Ida, come back here. No, no, I can make it. Ida, don't be a fool. It's fast work. And a woman, too. Even a woman can save lives, Mr. Wilson. Yes, even a 17-year-old girl. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of our story of Ida Lewis. How do you feel when the mailman brings you an unexpected letter or a card from a friend you haven't seen in a long time? Isn't there a special brightness to the day, even if the snow is falling or the sun is overcast? Somehow your job seems a little easier and your joys a little happier just by that one kind remembrance. Well, most of us haven't the time to write a letter to our dear ones as often as we think of them, but we can show our thoughtfulness in a special way a way that takes so little time and costs so little money. I mean by sending Hallmark cards. You'll find there's a Hallmark card that expresses your warmth and wishes perfectly. A card to say, congratulations to a new mother, or happy birthday to a relative, or just a cheery, hello, I'm thinking of you. Yes, sending a Hallmark card is always the gracious thing to do. And you'll find you'll repaid many times over in friendship that can't be measured by cost. Why don't you remember someone today? with a card that has a hallmark on the back, the familiar hallmark that means you care enough to send the very best. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. Of encouragement and then grasp wildly at a pair of arms reaching down to them over the stern of another rowboat, arms slender and graceful, the arms of a 17-year-old girl. And when it's over, Ida goes quietly back to her lighthouse and to her duties. Then, a few weeks later, young William Wilson ties up his supply boat at the island landing. This time, there's another man with him. A man who goes alone up the path to the caretaker's cottage. Miss Lewis, the Massachusetts Humane Society, which I represent, has received a report of your rescue of the two soldiers from Fort Adams. Another report was sent by the commandant of the fort to the War Department in Washington. Oh, dear, I, I didn't expect such a fuss to be made. An act of such remarkable courage deserves to be acknowledged, Miss Lewis. And it's my hope to bring it before the public at large. But, Mr. Nichols... Wait, I have a reason. For half a century, the Massachusetts Humane Society has fought to lower the needless loss of life by shipwreck along the Atlantic coast. The Society has built its own life-saving stations wherever and whenever funds would allow. But there's need for much more. More lifeboats and equipment, more crews to man the stations. And what prevents this? Simply public apathy. I see. Sir, if there's any way in which I can help... There is. As a woman who's already saved two lives, you can write and speak and influence other women. And through them, the men. Then you have my word. Thank you, Miss Lewis. (laughs) 
But Ida Lewis is soon to help in a way still more dramatic. The hour's near sunset, skies gray and lowering. The driving wind lashes across Newport Harbor and sends spume dashing over the boat landing at Rock Island, where Ida waits for the approaching supply boat. The boat, she's settling by the bow. I know, the piling ram to hold inside. Quickly, Mr. Wilson, hurry. Now it's night. The darkness broken only by the narrow finger of light eye over the cottage on Lime Rock Island. Now, can you hold the end of the bandage? Sure. I'll try not to hurt too much, Will. What? I said I'll try and... You called me Will. For the first time, I'm not Mr. Wilson. Oh, Oh, well, I I didn't realize... No, don't apologize. I I like it. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Go ahead. Now, you've got to get to a doctor. Mm. As soon as I finish this, I'll get the lantern and signal Fort Adams. You think a boat would put out on a night like this? Listen to it. Will. That didn't sound like thunder. I remember the last time we heard that. Yes, it's Fort Adams. Well, look. Look, a rocket. And another. But it's not going up from the main channel. I know it's the reef. A ship's gone on the reef. Oh, it'll pound to pieces in an hour. And the crew... Will, do you think you can climb the lighthouse? Clear up to the gallery? Oh, uh, yes. Then but... listen. The lamp and the burner and the mirrors are all on a revolving base. Yes, I want you to swing the light and shine it out on the reef. I'll need the light to guide me. Ida, you can't. A rowboat couldn't live in that water. And yet it might, Will. I've got to try it. Well, then I'm coming with you. No, no, with your broken shoulder. You'll take a face I need for the survivors. Ida, it's insane. You'll never come back. Please, we're wasting time. No, I won't let you go. I'm not going to lose you. Will. Yes, Ida. Oh, this isn't the way I wanted to tell you, but now you know. You can't go. But I must. Goodbye, my dear. Ida! Darkness and wind and wave. A wind that cuts and sears the face. Waves that toss the fragile rowboat like a child's toy. And dash down upon it like a watery apple. Help me, God. Please, please. Then the great beam of the lighthouse swings slowly overhead and stops. Pointing like a giant finger. How the water seethes and boils. The reef. Grab onto the oar. Now, now, give me your hand. Careful, don't tip it over. Oh, God bless you, man. God bless you. Now a second time. Your second hand clutching desperately for life. Then another. And another. There's no woman to do this. It's a nightmare. Quickly, how many more are there in the water? Well, there's, there's no more, ma'am. There were five of us in the long boat when it's stove in. The, the rest of us are still on ship. They'll go down with it, Russell. No, no, there's still a chance. Help me with the oars. Back to the lighthouse. Right. Five sailors brought to the safety of the island. Then Ida Lewis turns the rowboat back toward the reef. Three times she struggles to the shattered ship, 
and three times she returns. Officers and crew are safe to the last man. And now the storm's but a faded memory. Seagulls wheel peacefully over the sparkling bay. The new and bigger supply boat ties up at the lighthouse landing. Oh, well, well, you've named her after me. Do you mind? Of course not. Oh, she's lovely. She certainly is. Uh, the boat, of course. Of course. Is she easy to handle? Well, frankly, uh, no. The skipper wouldn't have her any other way. And she wouldn't have any other skipper. And now it's time the skipper got those supplies up to the house. Aye, aye, ma'am. Oh, don't forget about next week. I'll be coming out for you in the morning. The presentation at the fort is set for noon sharp. Oh, I wish they wouldn't make such a commotion. It frightens me. Frightens you? What could ever frighten you, my dear? Ceremony. Ceremonies terrify me. All of them? Even the ceremony we're going to have? No. Not that one, Will. You'll be by my side. So, on the appointed day, at the appointed hour, a carriage rolls to a halt on the parade ground of Fort Adams. The commandant of the fort, offers his arm, and Ida Lewis walks shyly past the troops lined up in dress parade. Then she curtsies before an old friend. Miss Lewis, in tribute to your brave and selfless acts of courage, in recognition of your repeated acts of valor in the saving of 22 lives from the sea, the Massachusetts Humane Society is honored to present you this silver medal of achievement. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. I... I... One moment more. As a further acknowledgement, as a signal tribute from the nation at large, I hereby present to you, Ida Lewis, by special award of the Congress of the United States, this gold medal. The first gold medal ever to be awarded by Congress to an American woman. I... I'm humbly grateful, sir. My dear, it's my place to be grateful. I once asked you to write and speak in the cause of life-saving. But your acts have spoken so much better for you. And now the people and the government understand. The life-saving service is no longer a dream. It is a reality. Island Lighthouse was later renamed the Ida Lewis Lighthouse as a permanent tribute to her memory. And the Massachusetts Humane Society was able to prevail upon the government to establish the official United States Life Saving Service, which we know today as the United States Coast Guard. The saving of lives is a tradition of the United States Coast Guard, which down through the years has served so faithfully and so well. Yes, and any young man today can be proud of being a part of this fine organization. Today there's a Coast Guard Reserve, too. It's open to young men between 17 and 18 and a half years of age. You can find out all about it by writing to the United States Coast Guard Reserve, Washington, D.C. And now for news of next week's story on the Hall of Fame. For a moment, though, Frank Goss has a few words to say about good taste. Have you ever analyzed the words good taste? It's a complimentary term all of us use often, and yet it has nothing to do with cost or rarity or social prestige. You might say that good taste simply means uh, suitability, doing or saying or wearing the right thing at the right time. That's why so many thoughtful people turn to Hallmark cards when they want a special greeting that's correct for the occasion, correct down to the last detail. 
you'll find that Hallmark cards always capture a mood, whether it's the fun of a birthday or the promise of graduation or the joy of Mother's Day. And here's something else you'll like to know. Even though the quality of Hallmark cards improves year after year, their prices remain the same. So next time you want to send happiness in an envelope, go to a fine store where Hallmark cards are sold. You can count on it. The hallmark on the back of every card you mail will tell your friends you care enough to send the very best. And now here again is Mr. Barrymore. Well, Frank, it's good to hear that good taste in choosing hallmark cards don't cost any more. <laughs> because all of us like to feel that we're men and women of good taste. I think it was a Frenchman named Poincelot who once said, Good taste is the flower of good sense. And an Englishman, Fielding, the author, put it this way. A truly elegant taste is generally accompanied with excellency of heart. Hey. Well, I think our story next week on the Hallmark Radio Hall of Fame will be to your taste, too. It's about another remarkable woman. This time, the story of a young Indian girl who guided a famous expedition through a hostile wilderness opening the great northwest to a growing America. The girl's name was Sarkarjawiya. And I hope you'll all be listening to this stirring true story of courage and adventure on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Our Hallmark Hall of Fame is every Sunday. Our producer, director, is William Gay. Our music was composed and conducted by David Rose. And our script tonight was written by Leonard Sinclair. Uh, until next Sunday, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Ida Lewis was played by Barbara Eiler, with Whitfield Connor as William, Victor Rodman as Hosea Lewis, Ted DeCorsi as Mr. Nichols, and Peter Leeds as Gilman. Every Sunday, Hallmark Cards presents two great programs for the whole family's enjoyment. The Hallmark Hall of Fame, on radio with host Lionel Barrymore, and on television with Miss Sarah Churchill. Consult your paper for time and station. This is Frank Goss, saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when we present another true-to-life story of actual persons who in their own way have contributed to a better world for all of us to live in. Next Sunday, we honor Sakaya Juia on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.